Hey, it's Cable with uh, One to One Fitness and Red Deer Fit Body Bootcamp, and today I just want to teach you something else that hopefully maybe helps somebody uh, achieve their fitness goals or beyond. And if you haven't figured out it by now, at One to One we think a little bit differently. So today is going to be another one of those kind of obscure videos where it's not going to be related to some technique about working out or some nutritional tip that eat this food or don't eat that food to have magic bullet type results. You know, we're going to talk about things that are often overlooked, but yet are critically important if you're serious about reaching your goals. And uh, today, again, is going to be a little bit of a psychology lesson. I'm going to start with a, a quick little interesting story. So um, over the last two decades, I've literally trained thousands of people, okay? And it hasn't just been weight loss. You know, it has been injury repair, recovery, uh, surgical intervention, or avoiding surgery, rather, and uh, all kinds of weird things from athletes, all levels, etc. But one of the stories that kind of I hold dear and has always stood out of my mind is I had a client that came to me originally for weight loss that smoked a lot. Okay, and certainly I've had lots of clients that smoke, but this one in particular was really serious about finally making a change to quit smoking, lose weight, and get in shape for all. And they had terrible fears that when I quit smoking, I'm going to gain all this weight. So uh, it's interesting because years ago, uh, I had a strategy for this, and I've actually written about it in the paper, and it's, it's on our website and stuff somewhere. And um, lately, you know, I, I don't know about you, but I'm always learning, I'm always reading new books, and uh, lately I've been reading a lot of Tony Robbins stuff, and he talks about your mind and neural conditioning and how to break the patterns that we kind of all have that um, kind of force us to stick to the same behavior, some that we don't necessarily like or would like to see change in our life. But anyway, back, back to this quitting smoking story. So there were some aspects of this that even all those years ago that I, that I understood and was trying to apply both in my own life and with my clients in effort to help them embrace change. So how did I help this person quit smoking? Well, the first thing is that we had to talk about why is it that they smoke or why is it that most people smoke? Okay, they smoke often because it's a break. It's a break from the world today. It's a break from work. It's a break from anything that might be going on in their life. Okay, so it becomes a measure of positive reinforcement because if, they, if they're if they smoking, particularly these days, they typically know that they have to leave their present environment, move to another specific environment where the main focus of that environment is smoking. Okay, so in many ways it's a very positive experience because if they're in an uncomfortable or stressful environment, they leave that environment temporarily to a place that's safe doing something that they enjoy, something that often makes them feel good, or at least psychologically they get that affirmation of being able to take a break from everything. So it's really easy to see how something like smoking, which is terrible for you from a health standpoint, and quite frankly I don't know how anybody can enjoy it, but it's easy to see and understand how it, you can become conditioned to believe that it's a positive thing, or that it feels positive, or that every time you complete that action, it's a positive thing. So this is the problem with quitting any type of behavior, you know, uh, whether it's smoking, drinking, whether it's overeating, whether it's a massive cravings for chocolate or whatever it is, we first have to break the psychological connection that says that this is a positive contribution to your life and that it actually makes you feel better in the moment because we know that we're all wired for instant gratification. So what did I do with my clients all those years ago to help them quit smoking? Well. First thing I said is you have to keep a journal, much like a food journal. We need to see how much you are smoking. Okay, so let's say in this case it was uh, two packs a day, which I don't even know how many cigarettes that is, but let's for the sake of argument see that's 40 cigarettes a day. Okay, so the point is, is once we established that, the next step was that we needed to uh, organize some consistency of that behavior. So no matter what, they had to smoke 40 cigarettes a day. Okay, and that doesn't sound like a problem for anybody that's doing something for a long time until this happens. Okay, the day is busy, you're doing lots of stuff, you get distracted, you realize that you haven't smoked as much as normal, and now at the end of the night, they only have smoked 20 cigarettes, and they have to smoke another 20 more. This is a really, really important moment. They cannot go to bed before they smoke those other 20 cigarettes. Okay, because the point is, is that we need to get to a point where psychologically they're disgusted by the behavior. That that behavior is now associated with pain as opposed to pleasure. Okay, and this is actually what, I, what I'm reading in Tony's book right now, and he is really an expert about talking about this neural conditioning. And he really breaks it down into the simplicity of all of this, that as people, our day-to-day -day actions are guided by those two things. 
pleasure, pain. We will try to avoid pain and seek out pleasure at all costs. So in this quitting smoking story, step number one is that we had to have that consistency. Before the end of the day, they needed to smoke 40 cigarettes because we were looking for those days that suddenly that become a negative thing because they had so much to smoke at the end of the day. The second thing is that we had it to give them the conditioning or repeat feeling that this was a negative and awful thing other than just those couple hours before bed. So they also had to fill up a jar with water Okay, and every time they smoked, they had to save the cigarette butt and they had to put it in this jar that was on their counter in their kitchen beside their stove. Okay, because I wanted to make sure that every time that they smoked or, or they thought about eating something, they were met with that image of those cigarette butts in the water. And as you can imagine, this water gets murky and gross and they start to expand and blow up and it starts to give you an association of you know, what's going on in your body. So I also had them attach a sign to this jar that says, this is what my lungs look like inside. Because the point is, is we wanted to create that psychological reinforcement or that repeat behavior of how awful this is so that we can eliminate the feelings of pleasure and associate it with pain. So it really is interesting reading Tony's stuff and that this is the first step in that if we wanna change anything in our life, so if you're trying to lose weight, okay, we must first eliminate uh, or we first must uh, associate the pain involved with staying the same that you are, okay? But most people find the process of losing weight, the dieting, the consistent eating, the avoidance of certain foods, the exercising more, much more painful than maintaining the weight. This is the honest reality, whether we choose to admit it or not, is that most of us become very comfortable when we are met with short-term discomfort. Okay, we would rather avoid that discomfort and maintain our current behaviors, even though it's not conducive to what we really want, which is to lose the weight. So how do we eliminate, uh, how do we reassociate pleasure with losing weight? Well, we need to condition ourselves for reward. First, we have to decide this is in fact what we want to do. Then we have to decide why is it that we want to do it? What are the reasons or what is the reasons that we cannot afford to stay the same? Okay, are you over 35 these days or over 40 and you're overweight and you have family that you're worried about heart and cardiovascular disease, which is one of the most dangerous things in our world today as far as killing people? You know, are you worried about the threat of type 2 diabetes that is growing rampant in our society? Are you simply just worried because you have kids or grandkids that you can't keep up with, you can't enjoy or do the activities that you used to? What is it that bothers you so much about the way you are that you really need to change? You need to first get in touch with those things are so that we can determine what is it that is painful about staying the way we are. Now we need to decide our action plan. Are you going to exercise regularly? If so, what are you going to do and how often? Are you going to modify your eating habits? If so, what is your plan of action? Now we need to execute that plan, but we need to condition ourselves to succeed in terms of immediate positive reinforcement. Most people set a goal that says, if I lose 30 pounds, here's my reward. The problem with that is that you'll never make it. Okay, because we are not designed to have that extended period of surviving that pain, okay, in an effort to make it to that reward. Okay, we are so conditioned that says, oh, this is painful, this is painful, this is painful, I don't have the willpower, forget it. So we need to positively reinforce. And actually, it was just something in Tony's book that I was reading that uh, really prompted me to make this video this morning, is that you shouldn't wait any specific time for rewards. You don't have to wait even one day, not even one hour, not one minute. Okay, the, one, the absolute instant that you decide to do something that is a change from your previous behavior, give yourself the reward of reinforcement. So for instance, maybe you always have dessert, okay? So today, if you simply decided at dinner not to have dessert, reward yourself, okay? Don't reward yourself with dessert, but what else is it that there's meaningful that you could give to yourself in an effort to say, you know what, there's a pat on the back, you did a great job. Or enlist your peers or support group in an effort to help give you that positive reinforcement to condition you from the new behavior. This stuff isn't easy. Okay, but it is very practical when we start to think about it, okay, in that the basic mechanics to change anything in our lives is we have to determine what is it that is painful about staying the same and so painful that we are willing to overcome or face that short-term discomfort of changing that behavior. So the pain associated with staying the same 
has to now be greater than the short-term pain of, of experiencing the change. We need to decide on the action plan, and then we need to not beat ourselves up when we fail, but we need to constantly reward ourselves when we succeed. It's only through positive reinforcement do we keep doing things because we are attached to pleasure. We have to make it pleasurable. I don't know, this could be a lot of rambling. It might not make any sense. It might not be any use. Maybe it will. I hope it helps just one person. And if very, if in nothing else, it's a shameless plug for uh, the Anthony Robbins book I'm reading, which is Awaken the Giant Within. So check it out. Hopefully this helps. I'll talk to you next week on Cable from 1 to 1 Fitness.